Hello YouTube, welcome back. Welcome back to Matt's Country. My name is Matt, unsurprisingly, and today we're going to discuss some very controversial and worrying developments. It does not involve fig rolls. That, as you're all aware, far too controversial. Today we're going to discuss my worries about the lead ban and the fact that one day those allegedly might be replaced by those. And to start with, I was open-minded. And in my shotgunning life, I'm quite all right with steel. I've been using it quite a lot now. And it's okay, it does quite a good job. I'm not worried at all, really. A couple of old guns people are worried about, but I'm worried about air rifles. Today, I'm worried about air rifles. That's what we're gonna discuss today. And we are not, repeat, not slagging off a brand. I'm gonna use a brand that I trust implicitly because I've used their pellets for a long time. I've purchased a batch of one of these test packs of H&N. Um, some of them in there are product I already know and I, I love. The, um, the Barracuda Hunter, particularly in 177, it's the only thing that I find does expand a little bit uh, on impact at sub 12 foot pound, which is what I shoot at. Um, this is a 2-2 pack. I've got some 177s here as well for other air rifles. I've shot a lot of pellets through a lot of guns over a long time and in theory, a lead band shouldn't worry a bloke who's been through a lot of other changes. But it does worry me, and here's why. Everybody is discussing the fact that a nice heavy lead pellet downrange carries a lot of energy, and it does. And that a lead pellet is capable of squishing and deforming and imparting its energy on the target when you're pest controlling, and it does. And all of that, all of that's important, all of it. But I'm worried about the beginning of the journey. You've just broken your air rifle, you know, it's cocked open, or you've underlevered it, or you're loading your PCP magazine, and you push the pellet into the breech. What actually happens? What actually happens? Because you, you straighten the barrel and you get ready for a shot and you pull the trigger, or you push the underlever up and you get ready for a shot and you, and you pull the trigger, or you've pushed the bolt forward in your PCP, safety off, click. What happens then before, before we worry about the energy retention at 35 meters or whether it's got a slightly different flight path to a lead pellet, what does happen? Here's what happens. And we are talking here, United Kingdom, sub 12 foot pound particularly, and in some parts of Europe, even lower. Every air rifle pellet, I'm gonna use as an example, that we've been using has been based for years around this Diablo shape. It's got a wide hollow skirt, separate head, and a thin waist. Why are they so popular? Well, this is the non-lead version of one of them. I'll get it in so you can see. There you go. See it? The two two. The air from your rifle has to go up the skirt of that. And like Marilyn Monroe stood on a hot air vent, the skirt has to expand. You push the pellet into the barrel, barrel's going that way. The wind hits it up the skirt. The skirt has to expand a fraction. It has to, because if it was so tight that it was already part of the rifling, the spirals in your gun, you'd never get the thing in. The head is fractionally smaller than the skirt. I'm illustrating this badly, but this is always as ever, one take, no edits. The head is always fractionally narrower than the skirt. The skirt needs to expand. And it, it just isn't expanding. In fact, these preposterous things, and once again, I'm not being disrespectful to, to the brand because I really, really, really like h and I've got loads of them and I keep buying them. I'll continue buying them because they make good pellets. But this, horror, which is so hard I can't even get the pliers to grip into it. This thing is just not working for me at all. So I decided to do an experiment, which I'm gonna do with you guys while you're here. So you can see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> I'm gonna use a lead and a non-lead pellet. I'm not shooting in my kitchen. These two, see them? How hard is one compared to the other. Pliers, the two of them together next to each other. I'm gonna put them in the pliers. I'm gonna to continue to hold them so they don't ping out. And I'm gonna squeeze very gently on the pliers, put a little bit more pressure and a bit more pressure, just seeing how hard or soft 
each of them is. You see, the lead has deformed and the copper has only deformed a tiny bit and the pliers are press pressing equally on them because I've got them either side. If I just do it on the skirts, so work further back and not the heads at all and squeeze again, the lead is the one that gives way straight away. This is hard to see, but there you go, that's better. Now, this is me squeezing them. The air from your air rifle has to thump it up the bum and expand its skirt. And it has to do that because otherwise it can't grab the rifling. It needs to spin up the barrel. It has to be spinning. If it just goes up the barrel and just grabs a bit here or there, it's gonna be a nightmare, which is actually what I think was happening. This isn't one I shot. The ones I shot are all downrange. Um, but I wouldn't have been able to find them because some of them didn't even hit the paper target at 30 meters, which is a disaster. And this, this thing, which is another one of theirs, which is not copper, actually was nearly as bad. I mean, there was a couple of moments when I thought, hey, I've got this sorted, it must be me. And then it flung off into the undergrowth and you thought, it's not happening. So, when the pellet gets to the end of the barrel, just as it's about to leave, it has to come out of the barrel equally on all sides. The end of your barrel, um, Let's pretend that's the barrel. It's got the spiral rifling inside and the pellet must come out of it at the same point all around. Otherwise, as one side comes out fractionally ahead of the other, the air that's blowing it, and let's face it, air rifles rely purely on air, so we know it's really important, pushes one side of the pellet and sends it off. And the problem is the non-lead ones aren't expanding into the rifling and therefore when they get to the end of the barrel they must not have a perfect grip on the rifling and therefore I think personally that's the reason the accuracy is not good. So forget down rain en en energy which is dead important because I don't think I'm going to be able to hit enough things with it. So I've got all these different lead pellets. I've actually got some um, 0.25s here. Um, once again H&M because I like H&M and these are lead. I don't have non-lead versions of these, and I won't be buying them to be very honest. But this is going to be an easier way to explain it because frankly they're bigger. He says, that pellet skirt, particularly at sub 12, which my 25 cal when it arrives will be, that needs to expand. The wind needs to stretch it. Now, how do I know that actually happens? Because many, many, many times I have made a pellet capture curtain, and you can too, but you've got to be careful. I'm not gonna show you how to do it because I don't want everybody complaining that they've shot their neighbor's cat. You've got to be careful with all your gun testing, okay? To make a pellet trap, a curtain, get an old pair of jeans, cut the legs off one of them, and hang that denim folded because it's two thicknesses because it's the whole leg in front of a safe pellet trap and shoot it from a distance when it hits the denim the denim will move like a curtain it's a bit like chucking a golf ball or a tennis ball or a cricket ball at a curtain it protects the window not because it's rigid but because the the fabric gives uh, in fact, anybody who shoots a catapult regularly will do this because it's a really, really safe way to catch catapult ammo is to just hang a sheet and the balls hit it and they kind of the, the, the curtain kind of moves and then the balls drop. Try it with a pair of je jeans, an old denim leg or a, whatever else you've got. It's got to be thick fabric and a safe catch behind so that once it's imparted most of its energy and you will see two things. You will see the denim imprinted on the lead, which is quite a shock when you first do it, but it does happen. And the second thing is you'll see, you will see the rifling on both the head, but more prominently on the skirt. And I know it doesn't do it on these. I can't even show you because it's nearly impossible to get a, This is all filmed on a mobile phone. That's what YouTube has to be for me. It needs to be realistic, down to earth, in one hit. If you don't like it, I'm really sorry. I know it's unprofessional but it's not is it this is real life all by the fig rolls which are a figment of your imagination so my concerns about lead we might have to stop using it if they do get a ban on it completely 
you can imagine there's going to be a massive stockpiling where people start buying it in advance. And I just can't see how that's going to work effectively. I won't put those through my barrels anymore. I'm positive. When, once I stopped shooting it and reverted back to lead, it, I, I, I thought the first three shots were all over the place. I cleaned the barrel. I leaded it with a couple more pellets and I was back to normal. And I'm thinking, thank God I haven't damaged my barrel because these are really hard. And these other ones, these other Barracudas, Barracuda Greens, are really hard. In fact, I go as far as to say, they're tougher. They are very tough, very tough. And if I can't squeeze them easily with pliers, whereas with a lead pellet, if we go even for a 0.25, let me give that a little pinch. I just go, so, well, you've all done this, you all know what it's like. You, you, can, you can crimp them with tweezers, you can crimp them with your thumbnail. So, to sum up, the ban isn't here yet. In shotguns, I'm nowhere near as worried. In rifles, and I don't have a firearm certificate, so I don't have any hunting rifles, I'm quite worried for the boys. I know there's been some good testing and a lot of people have done well with it, but maybe because they've got enough power, they're getting the rifling. And let's face it, they're not using this shape. They're using a proper, proper shape bullet, which is why, incidentally, I'm not a great fan of... Um, of air rifle slugs sub 12 because once again they don't have a proper skirt the wind can't expand them they're not getting enough energy up the barrel but that's a different subject altogether <clears throat> i'm concerned about these now if you are or if you're not i'm going to do that youtube thing now mention it mention it i'd like very much to get a few more subscribers it'd be superb and i'm very grateful that um, field sports tv mentioned me the other day and i thought blimey that's nice um, so thanks to Danny from Silverline Solutions for, for putting me forward on that one. Lack of lead is a worry. Why have I kept them? I will try them in another gun one day. I don't know which gun because I'm worried about the barrel. If I get an old knacker, maybe I'll use them on tin cans or something. I can imagine, and I've not tried, I can imagine these things ricochet like a bum because one of the beauties of lead is when it hits something, whether it's a flint in the ground or... Um, a bit of metal around a, a farmyard that you're pest controlling on, they deform, they bend, and then they don't ping off at mad, I and mean, they do ping off, but they don't go up at mad angles because they put most of their energy into changing shape. And I've always found with non, because I've tried non lead before, that they ricocheted at terrifying angles. Now the last, the last thing that's worth a quick mention is that these, these are all right, these are lead, with a metal point and having shot them the uh, the metal point dislodges in fact i've shot um, pest with them now and the two things do come apart so you've got kind of the benefit of the lead skirt and the benefit of the pointy hard tip which sounds quite cool they, but they weren't as accurate as a traditional round nosed diablo so actually it always revolves around the same thing. I almost always end up back with a round nose pellet. I tried those, they deform beautifully, but they're only any good really out for about 25 meters. They're your classics that a lot of people have tried. They are just superb. <clears throat> I said I wouldn't be rude about anybody. I'm gonna be respectfully honest. They are the worst pellets I have ever owned. They are categorically the worst pellets. They don't even all fit. Sometimes they fall down a 177 barrel and other times you have to hammer it in with a sledgehammer. Anyway, I'm going to get back to my fig roll. I'm going to ask you this, please. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. I won't be offended. That's life, isn't it? If you do like it, subscribe because it helps, apparently. I'm not going to get paid for this. There's never going to be enough viewers for me to earn a single penny. This is about you lot picking up some stuff from a grumpy old man. And with that, from Matt's country, I'll say adieu. Take care and goodbye.